Okay, this screencast will pick up with the effects of the Great Depression, so if you already have covered this topic in your class, please fast forward. Um, during the Depression, since many Americans don't have the means to go out and entertain themselves, like by going to the movies or spending money, um, they will find ways to entertain themselves at home um, as a family unit. So, for example, board games became super popular in the 30s. You see the game Monopoly on your screen. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the game or if you and your family have ever played. It got pretty intense in my household growing up, very competitive with games. But this game, for example, became super popular probably because it deals with, you know, spending money and buying property, which is what people could not afford to do during the Depression era. Um, but this is an example of how the Depression actually brought families together. You know, times are tough, so let's um, stick together and make it through together. In other examples, families did not unify during the Depression, but rather broke apart. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into psychology here, but you know, if you have taken AP Psych or even regular psychology, you know that, you know, men and women are genetically built differently, um, even psychologically. So this is a very, you know, blanket statement, not necessarily affecting every individual, male or female, but typically all men, they're kind of wired to be successful, to work hard and reap the reward and to provide. Um, because the unemployment rate, you know, being so high, nearly 25% during this era, Many men will struggle with that um, mentally, and some will choose to leave. Now, they're not trying to necessarily, in all situations, abandon their family. In some cases, they do abandon, but honestly, many of them are just leaving to try to find work. They feel they have to find work, and they have to be able to provide for their family. So we do see many families separated. You see on the screen, men walk in the tracks of the train. This is kind of the era of, you know, the hobo um, walking from town to town looking for job. That term describes a legitimate individual. Um, and that, that type of person does exist during that time. Now, women will also answer a call and, and make efforts during the Depression to care for their families. Um, they will try to preserve their resources by turning to canning food. Um, they will sew and make their own clothes. They will control the budget. And some of them will seek out employment outside of the home. They'll find jobs. And um, occasionally they would be awarded jobs. Now, this was actually met with some resentment because a woman holding a job was seen as taking it away from a man who could be holding that job um, during such a desperate time of job seeking. So that's unfortunate that women were kind of um, blamed or criticized when actually having a wage of course, they're being paid less money, which is why they were probably employed for these particular jobs. But again, still met with resentment during this high time of unemployment. You know, children greatly suffered during the Depression as well. Um, it's not really a fun time for kids, especially kids in some of the poor families and poor communities um, suffering during the Depression. You know, many of them are also not being taken care of as well in the sense of like their meals and their food. Many are malnourished, um, poorly clothed. They're not going to the doctor as much as they should. Um, they're not, you know, able to go to school for as long as they should be going to school. And then the truth is, is that when you kind of turn into a teenager, you're now viewed as more of a burden. I hate to say that, but it's true, you know, on your family. When you hit the age, which is really the age you are all now, ladies, you know, that you're, you may not feel self-sufficient, but you are capable of taking care of yourself. And if you take yourself out of the dynamic, then you would be more successful on your own and your family would be more successful without another mouth to feed. It's hard to think of yourself that way, but that's just the way things were um, during the Depression era. Some overall social and psycho psychological effects, we do see an increase in the suicide rate, a big jump from the late 1820s, I'm sorry, late 1920s, um, just because of how, you know, the depression did cause depression, uh, mental depression. There were three times as many admitted to middle ho uh, mental hospitals. Many adults thought taking care of their own health and needs with like going to doctors or dentists. And some had to put dreams of college on the back burner and put off things like getting married or having kids. Um, and that stigma won't ever really uh, disappear. Um, and one thing that doesn't disappear is the fact that people feel the need to save things, to save things that could be reused 
for other purposes. So that idea of like hoarding as a psychological, kind of almost like ailment where people feel the need to hold on to kind of um, mundane things because they wonder if they could ever use them for another purpose down the line. All right, we're now going to kind of talk about the transition of this era. Um, and that transition is going to be um, into a new presidency with the election of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay, so what we see is in the election of 1932, um, Herbert Hoover is going to run again as the Republican candidate and recall that he is super unpopular. Um, and that's going to play into this. The Democrats run um, former governor of New York, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who you all know as FDR. He is a distant cousin to Theodore or Teddy Roosevelt, not the same um, immediate family, but in close relation, okay? Because of Herbert Hoover's growing unpopularity, um, he, FDR is going to win by a landslide. You know, the um, American people really want to see the Democrats take over Congress and the White House to see if they're willing to um, promote more government intervention than the prior candidate, prior president, Herbert Hoover. And FDR is the man for the job because he's been working on a plan for several um, months by this point called the New Deal. Okay, the New Deal is FDR's plan to alleviate the problems of the Great Depression. He is a very long plan, a very wide scale plan. So just I'll bear with me as we discuss it. Um, but the three goals on just a short term are relief, recovery, and reform. Okay. Now. In his first 100 days in office, he is going to be a very active president. He's going to pass or have Congress pass, and he's going to sign into law more than 15, pa uh, 15 pieces sorry, of major legislation, some of which are um, part of the New Deal, as we'll discuss some of those programs in a second here. And two other things he establishes in his first 100 days in office are the bank holiday, where he closed all the American banks as to prevent people from withdrawing any more money, trying to keep the ones that were still open afloat for a little bit longer till the, um, oop, there's the bell, <laughs> till the um, money and the funding could balance out. And, you know, the longer it remained closed, the more it would have a little chance to stabilize. He also passed the Emergency Banking Relief Act, in which he authorized the Treasury Department to inspect the country's banks and those that were healthy could be reopened at the time um, of the bank holiday concluded, but those um, that were unable to pay their debts were closed for a temporary time. And then he also loaned out money to those banks that needed it. And we'll continue talking about fireside chats in class tomorrow. So if you have any questions, please write down those questions and I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you.